Welcome to the uh, latest Cloud Art class. So today we're going to take a look at this guy. And there's a little hint on his shoulder as to who he is. Now the subject matter for this class is a little bit junior, but the work we're doing isn't really that junior. So it might be worth taking a look at, even if you think that this little guy sitting on Eric Carl's shoulder is a little bit young for you. So Yes, you've guessed it. Eric Carle is the man who illustrated The Hungry Caterpillar, or sorry, The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Eric Carle is an illustrator. He's still alive. He's 91 years of age. He is um, a German-American. So he was born in America, but he was born in 1929. And um, around that time, his mother was very lonely for Germany. So his parents and himself moved back to Germany. So he was reared in Germany. and Unfortunately for Eric Karl, he was reared in Germany, well, he was young in Germany at the time of the Second World War. So his father actually was conscripted into the army and fought for the Germans in the Second World War. Um, his father survived the Second World War, but came home a very different man and a very difficult man to live with. He was quite traumatized from his time in the war. Um, Eric himself, so this is the first book that Eric Karl illustrated that became a very popular book. So he illustrated and worked with this, worked with um, Bill Martin Jr. on this book. It's called Brown Bear, Brown Bear, What Do You See? Some of you who are in junior classes might be already using it, and some of you in senior classes may remember it from junior, junior infant, senior infant time. Um, so this is a very famous um, book, but it wasn't as famous as the one that came next. So this one was made in 1967, and then the next book, is this guy, the very hungry caterpillar. So what happened was Eric Carr realized that he didn't actually need to work with the writer. He was able to write and illustrate his own books. So he illustrated and wrote the very hungry caterpillar in 1969, which means that the very hungry caterpillar is 51 years of age. Now I have a little recording of Eric um, Carr giving us a little bit of information on the kind of thinking behind the book. But the reason I'm showing it to you is to show you how he works. How does he make the illustration? Some of you will be able to tell from looking at it how he makes the illustration. The technique that he uses is collage. You're right, collage. But what Eric Carl uses um, for his collage is a little bit more intricate than what we use. So. When we make collage in class, and your task for this art class would be to make a collage, we use coloured paper. Eric Carl uses coloured paper, but it's paper he coloured himself, and more difficulty, it's actually tissue paper he colours himself. So it's really intricate work that he uses um, to make his beautiful illustrations. So let's move on and show you how he works, because it's kind of interesting to see how he works. Eric Carl, and I illustrated and wrote The Very Hungry Caterpillar. We are celebrating the 45th birthday of my book. This and recording is six years old. When I was small, a little boy, and I'm sure this is true for other children, I thought I'll never manage adulthood. Simple things like paying rent and have a family. How do you drive cars? How will you manage all that? The blade he's using, not for you to use. The story of the small, insignificant, ugly little caterpillar grows into a beautiful, big, hairless butterfly and flies out there. The message is you too will grow up. You too will be beautiful, and you too will fly into the world. I think that is the message. And it is the message of the very hungry caterpillar, that you too will grow up and become a beautiful butterfly. 
So right now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at So to show you how to prepare some paper, you can just take old letters, old fills, and just rub over them with some paint. Now, you know, you might not have any paint at home, and you might not have any paper. But the idea is that if you have, if you've got coloured paper or magazine pages, you can use that coloured paper to make a collage. If you don't have magazine pages or coloured paper, but you do have a bit of paint, you can take old letters, old bills, and just paint over them. Okay, so just give you a few seconds of looking at what I'm doing here, which is literally just painting old letters and pages. Front or back, it doesn't matter. Any colour. So now I'm showing you a video on how to get some coloured paper from catalogues, magazines, or maybe you have coloured paper at home. Also, you can work on a white page, or you can choose to work on the back of a cereal box as your page to work on top of. Nothing wrong with that. Cereal boxes are perfectly good to use as pages for art. So magazines, catalogues, you get into them, find coloured pages you like, rip them out, and break them down into the smaller pieces of the actual colour that you want. Now this particular video is quite lo a bit long drawn out and won't fit if I let it play at its proper speed. So there's times like now where I'm going to actually speed it up for you to just get a glimpse of as to what you need to do. So what we do is we fold the colour. So I've chosen a green colour. We fold it into four, or fold it into a smaller piece so that you can draw the shape of the the oval that we use for the hungry caterpillars, the different section of the very hungry caterpillar, and then you take a scissors and cut it out. Now the green colour I'm using for the body, so I'm going to have to make a whole series of uh, ovals to join them together, a bit like a jigsaw to make the body. So I'm going to use lots of different greens. So here you go now, when you fold it, you get four pieces. And then I go look for some more. Find another colour, more green, and you know what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to fold it, fold into four. Just be careful not to fold it so that the paper becomes too thick to cut. It's the only thing you need to be careful of. So using a pencil or a marker um, to draw the oval is helpful, but not necessary. Some of you might actually just be able to pick up the piece of paper and the scissors and just cut it into an oval. A whole series of them there. Put them with the other ones. So we've kind of got a body going. So I found an orange colour. Now I'm measuring the pieces I'm using for the body against the piece I'm going to use for the head because the head must be bigger than the rest of the body for the very hungry caterpillar. So I draw another oval shape and put that out. There you go, there's the head. And look in magazines, find the colours you need. Found a bit of yellow. Again, folding it. Checking that the eye isn't going to be too big, big for the head. So that's what I'm doing there by putting the red piece underneath or the orange piece underneath. Is checking that my eye 
I think I'm going to draw isn't going to be too big for my head. Got a couple of yellows ready for the eyes. Found a piece of blue now to put the pupils in. And the very hungry caterpillar has very big pupils. Same thing. Find the colour, turn it, fold it into the general size you want. Check the piece you're going to use is not too big or too thick. Turn the oval. Cut it out. Now you have all of the pieces that you need. The Very Hungry Caterpillar has an arched body. So you tend to have the head and then low down and then arch the body up off that. Pieces fitting together. And now you're going to glue them down. We're just going to fast forward through this bit because you don't really need to watch me glue every piece down. So you can use paint then to add extra pieces, extra details. That's just showing you the bare shell of it. And then you can add detail with paint. So you can paint on the little feet, you know the little feet the very hungry caterpillar has. They look like little boots. So you can paint them on. You could also draw on details with a bit of an L twistable or a crayon or a biro or even the mud you were using in your previous mud classes, mud drawing classes. And the other thing you can do is with the little bits of offcut from the coloured paper, you could cut out little bits and glue them on. Now, Eric Carroll's actual collages, you can still buy. As long as you've got about €12,000 for a very small one. So Eric Carroll's work is not like Van Gogh's, that it's priceless. It's not like millions and millions of euro. But he's worth 60 million euro from the money he makes as an illustrator. So that's Eric Carl's very hungry caterpillar.